beyond climate predictions and long-term managing long-term supplies, it's clear that getting enough water day by day is foremost on people's minds. When the challenge is so great and their children so thirsty, they often take their water sources into their own hands. Some entrepreneurs bring water by tank, pulled by a tractor, and sell at an inflated rate, while others drill their own unsanctioned wells, some even in the middle of the street. Across town in southwest Delhi, we arrive at Vasant Kunj, the informal community, a barrio, just as residents press against each other to reach a city-owned water tanker. Each person carries their own hose to siphon water from the truck into a mass of salvaged plastic containers. Just as quickly as the truck arrives, its tank is empty and it moves on. Like many of the world's megacities, Delhi relies heavily on groundwater supplies. The surface water is just too polluted or limited. But Delhi is sinking, and too many wells, too much water extracted. What water there is left underground is increasingly contaminated with agricultural runoff and industrial chemicals. Fortunately, some believe that hope may yet fall from the sky. The Force Center for Rainwater Harvesting along the outskirts of Vasan Kunj is just across the street from the poorest neighborhoods where wells do save lives. Jyoti Sharma shows me how efforts to capture and store the heavy rains from the summer monsoons may become the literal lifeblood of Delhi's water supplies. It stands here for a while and then after a while you see it all percolates into the ground. A few blocks away though, in the Harajan Basti block of Vasan Kunj, water flows freely from the ground. It's not an artesian well though, but rather an oasis of sorts created by a persistent leak in the city's water main. The community has cleverly built a makeshift cement catchment system to collect the flowing water and redirect it to pipes where children fill buckets and take baths. Our guide describes the scene. Papa, water leak is here and people collect this leakage water to drink. And how important is this water? This water is very important because drinking water is very already very less in our country. So the government has to save this water. And Ram Rati is president of this community of about 300 families, mostly immigrants from rural districts. She tells me that ironically, if the pipe was repaired, the water would pass them by and the community would literally dry up. It's a stark reminder that in many major cities, basic infrastructure is in shambles, and it doesn't have the capacity to reliably deliver safe water and treat the sewage for millions. And the trade-off between sanitation and drinking water can be stark. In another camp along the edge of Vasant Kunj, neighbors actually disassembled public toilets just to get to the water supplies that made them flush. Toward the end of the day, we stop in another camp in southwest Delhi, I hear women laughing and children playing and flying kites and water splashing. We make our final stop as a pall of dust and smog catches the sun's glow over the city. Brightly colored saris are saturated by the evening light and about 50 women line up to fill their buckets from a single rubber hose that will flow for about two hours each morning and evening. Nearby, the young boys I heard are playing near a putrid green sewage lagoon and in the bushes is where the residents go to the bathroom. In 2014, Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the Swash Bharat Initiative in a drive to end open defecation within five years and to upgrade the nation's sanitation infrastructure. But today, the sewage still flows freely downhill. While the women filled their tanks and one stopped to pose for a picture, I'm going into business, the 20-year-old proclaims with confidence, I wondered where this water comes from. Following the hose, I find that it's connected to a small pipe, which disappears off into the trees. I take the path through the garbage and the feces to a single rusting well poking out of the ground, pulling from the shrinking supply beneath the city. A single woman approaches. I had seen her watching from a distance as the others filled their buckets. She cradles her arms as if to hold a baby and points to the clouds above. Through tears, she tells me that her baby became sick from the water and recently died. A young girl wanders through the rubbish and stands on the rusting well as the last bit of light fades through the trees. And together we can hear the women in the distance haul their buckets home, hoping that the water will flow again the next morning. For Circle of Blue, I'm J. Carl Ganter in Delhi, India.